Delighted to have our next guest return. He's a member of National Security Leaders for America. He's also a retired Major General. He served as the number two leader of the National Guard Bureau and also helped to coordinate National Guard resources in response to natural disasters. Randy Manor is here. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Jane. I am very happy to be here. Absolutely. Well, you just got off a bus tour. You and a number of other National Security Leaders for America were actually in Wisconsin. You made a stop in Madison and La Crosse just a couple of days ago. For people who don't know, Randy, explain what National Security Leaders for America, who are you? Of course. So we are an, or, we're an organization, a bipartisan organization of Democrats, Republicans, and independents composed of over a thousand generals, admirals, senior enlisted leaders, ambassadors, uh, senior executive service members, as well as some political appointees from both parties. And we are, uh, quite frankly, the best way to phrase this, we typically have been on the sidelines our entire, well, first of all, by law, we spoke out up not at all about politics right. while we were in the military or in government service. Since we have all retired, uh, we are now upholding our oath of of supporting and defending the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And we are united in supporting democratic, excuse me, those candidates that believe in the concept of democracy. It doesn't matter whether you're Republican or, 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 or um, Democrat, it doesn't matter. Do you support the concept of people voting and encouraging people to vote? And that's why we support both Republicans and Democrats across the country. But you are particularly concerned about a second, the, the possibility of a second Trump term. Oh, we are united. I, let me clarify. We are absolutely 100% united that Trump must never, ever, ever be the commander in chief and president of the United States ever again. We are 100% united, all of us, no matter what, whether Republicans, Democrats, or independents, we are united in supporting uh, Vice President Harris and Governor Waltz for the for the president and vice presidency. Absolutely. I just, I just want to repeat that one more time. <laughs> there are over 1,000 former generals, admirals, ambassadors, political appointees of all political stripes, Republicans, Democrats, independents, over 1,000 of these experts all agree that Donald Trump should never get back into the Oval Office. Now, you have a, an opinion piece, Randy, this morning in uh, the, the Wall Street Journal, in particular about natural, uh, natural disasters, of which you have had some experience. Yes, yes. So as the uh, acting vice chief of the National Guard Bureau uh, back in 2011 and 12, my job was to help support the adjutants general in the states to support the governors with National Guard resources as well as coordinating in the Pentagon the money to back it up so that our uh, our citizens in affected areas could be uh, helped uh, and rescued uh, both during the disaster and afterwards uh, to work hand in hand with FEMA in support of the governors of each state. And so uh, it is very, I guess the best way to put it, it is near and dear to my heart, the value that the our government can bring to affected citizens it must just make your head explode when you hear donald trump out on the stump this week saying that fema's not there they're giving people 750 dollars, and that's all and there's no help for people who have been hit by hurricane helene and hurricane milton and yeah it, it it's just that's not true so not only is it not true, I mean, not true, they're, they're 100% lies, not somewhat lies, all of them are lies. I have been there, I have done that, I have coordinated all of the National Guard resources of tens of thousands of guardsmen for various natural disasters to include the money to back it up. And then, as I mentioned, in combination with FEMA, because remember, the lead agency for disaster recovery is the governor of each state. And so the federal government supports the governor with resources. So the fact that uh, Trump is literally spreading these lies and innuendo, first of all, it's indicative of the way that he thinks. If it's not about him, he literally is doing this on the backs of, in many cases, the very people who support him. 
because the people who believe what he says, unfortunately, and refusing the aid are exactly the kind of people that probably need it the most. So it, it breaks my heart. I have been, I've talked to so many people uh, who have family in the affected areas and they, parents typically, but other times brothers or sisters who believe Trump emphatically and deny the ability for anyone to speak with them about possibly helping them for fear that their house will be taken or some other terrible thing could happen. It's just such a, it's, it's the ultimate icing on the cake of the tragedy of the, of the falsehoods and lies that he spreads that are hurting his very own people. It just, what a betrayal. I, I'm what, a, what a betrayal. Oh, it's a betrayal of his own people. Yes. And, and, you know, the one thing that bothers me so much, so very greatly is I did this five day uh, tour endorsing like minded candidates from Pennsylvania across to Michigan and Wisconsin and, and so on is, is just the fact that um, I mean, I've done so many interviews and there's four factors that I think are very important for the average person to hear your listeners to hear is that what we are dealing with, unfortunately, is a classical cult situation. And what are the four most important aspects of when someone's part of a cult? The first uh, indicator is members of the cult deny they're a member of a cult. That's the first one. The second factor is that they believe everything their great leader says. They believe everything to be true. The third factor or indicator of, of a cult is that anybody who speaks ill of the great leader is the enemy and should be chastised and and basically um, uh, jailed. He's he's he's, oh. he's he's fond of jailing uh, people oh. who do, who aren't nice to him. Oh, and our list of a thousand is probably where he would start, quite frankly. Yep. Yep. And then the fourth factor is that anybody who leaves a cult is the absolute worst possible en enemy and must be hunted down and disparaged, which is exactly what Trump does with, for example, Vice President Cheney or or Representative. Congresswoman Cheney, and and just quite frankly, hundreds of other people who have come out from the Republican side, many who have observed him directly and said, oh my God, this guy is a cult leader and he is a danger, a clear and present danger to our country. And sir, that's something we've talked about many times on this show. And I think one of the other aspects of a cult is the leader gets to change the rules anytime he or she wants. Yes. And these individuals who came into the in, came into the fold years ago and were part of the plan and were, were great helps, the moment they walk away or they're just not even good enough or they somehow contradict him or criticize him, they're off the table. To me says to the most fervent supporters, fine, you want to support him, but he will change the goalposts on you. In fact, he's doing that now, even with the disaster relief, changing like spreading these lies and then in years later he'll probably say i helped you and they'll be like yes you did so right. it's just always a changing scenario and you can't feel, and in a cult they say you also never feel happy you're always right. on edge about what's going to happen next you're, you're how is the leader yeah. going to be mad right you're always and not only that uh usually parts of cults are that they are angry people now mm. look i'm an older white guy for those of you who are not watching the 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 podcast here but on the radio i'm an older white guy but the worst offenders are older and younger white men which i just don't understand but part of it is i do that they feel disenfranchised or the people are not listening to them they want a strong man i i understand those components the sad news is the very sad news is that uh it's going to it's causing hate and division in communities in families and and that's not the kind of leader that we want to follow. We want to follow someone that's going to be hopeful and someone who's going to say, we're all going to get a chance to get to the start line together and then go on from there. Because if you really think about it, and Jane and Greg, what, what really what Americans want, they want stability. They want good jobs. They want to feel safe in their home and in their community. They want a good education opportunities for their children and for their grandchildren. They want to be treated fairly and equally under the law. And that is what Vice President Harris and, quite frankly, every other president in history other than Trump, yep. every other president has worked hard 
to work for all Americans to provide the, that opportunity. And so I think this is, again, it's a clear and present danger. I'm not holding back. Uh, I encourage everyone to not only exercise your right to vote. And by the way, this is not about policies or politics anymore. So if you're a Republican listening to this, who's voted Republican for 30 or 40 years or, or four years, whatever, I encourage you, along with literally the thousands of people that I've actually heard from in the past three months, I encourage you that this is the one time to put politics aside and say, do you want to vote for a wannabe dictator who has said it by himself that he will Out be loud. that? Yep. Out, yeah. And, and that he will be vindictive and he will go after people and he will silence the press. He's already threatened the New York Times. I mean, he's, he threatens anybody who doesn't agree with him. This guy, and I know people don't like hearing this, but it is the absolute same playbook of appealing to young men and young white men and disenfranchised older men that Hitler used from 23 to 33. It's the same kind of a playbook. But remember, cult members don't see this. If you're just joining us, our guest is retired Major General Randy Manor, and he is what, a member of the National Security Leaders for America. They just did a bus tour swing across parts of Pennsylvania, Michigan, and here in Wisconsin with stops in Madison and La Crosse. And you have an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal today, Randy. We're going to put that in our show notes after the show yes, is over. Thank you. But uh, because now we're so fresh off of Hurricane Helene and Milton, and you helped to organize disaster responses when yes. you were still in the government and you talk about project 2025 and what this would do not only do they want to get rid of noaa and make you pay to get a forecast but they're going to completely upend how fema is funded right i mean the, the sad thing is uh look i am a i'm what, what, what you refer to as a uh fiscal conservative and yet i'm and also a social liberal meaning that I believe we only need enough government to get by, which means there's many states, unfortunately, across our great country that don't believe in environmental protection for their citizens. There's a lot of people who don't believe in education standards that are sufficiently high enough to provide good, good education and good jobs. So we need parts of government to provide for certain standards to raise us up as a people and to provide, provide great opportunity, not only in the local community, but internationally as well. And with that idea, Trump is trying to get rid of the federal government, get rid of the safety nets, reduce social security, reduce the idea of disaster recovery. How can poor states, no offense, but predominantly in the South, in, in Florida, for example, with no income tax, how the heck is Florida going to pay for all of this recovery if indeed there is no uh, federal government to help? We're going to continue this conversation with retired Major General Randy Manor. Stay with us. You are listening to Matt Mayer on Air, coming to you across the vast and global civic media radio network. Good, good morning. Welcome back to Matt Mayer on Air. Jane Matt Mayer, Greg Bach, Calvin B. on the board, coming to you from our studio in downtown Waukesha. You can join us. Call or text 855-752-4842. Leave a comment if you're watching on the live stream on Facebook, YouTube, and what used to be Twitter, just a reminder, Wednesday, October 16th, this coming Wednesday, is the deadline to register to vote in Wisconsin online or by mail. So do it. Register now. You can register the day of. It's easier if you do it in advance. Go to myvote.wi.gov, myvote.wi.gov, and get registered to vote. And make sure you have a plan to vote either early or by mail or in person on November 5th. Delighted to have our next guest return on the show. Retired Major, Major General Randy Manor is here, also a member of National Security Leaders for America. And this is a group made up of 1,000 retired ambassadors, generals, admirals from all political stripes, Democrats, Republicans, independents, you name it, who are all in agreement that Donald Trump is essentially an existential threat to our country and should never be back in the Oval Office again. Randy, you have a, an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal today. I want to go back to Project 2025 and what this would do to people who experience natural disasters. We have tornadoes here in Wisconsin. We have flooding here in Wisconsin. So this would also push to privatize 
disaster relief. So does what does that mean? So I think it's very important for every listener to understand that um, I do believe in the power of the private sector. At the same time, I also believe that the government is going to be there when you need them. And so the idea of decreasing the government and, and not uh, permitting this, you know, the one thing about, it's like a life preserver, you know, that life preserver sits on your boat or on a ship, if you're on a cruise or something, and you don't really need it till you need it. And then yeah. you need it. Big well, time. that mm -hmm. is what the federal government is for. Whereas with a private sector, they might go, uh, you know what, lowest bidder, you know, not so much. Yeah, whatever. No, no. We want people that say on their uniform, U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force, uh, U.S. Navy to support you. We want FEMA to be able to support their support you for it. So and then it always when you privatize things, quite frankly, having the states pay for this is very, very dangerous for the poorer states. And that's I'm looking at this from the entire country. I am not right. looking at this from one single state because no offense, you know, I, I live in the state of Virginia right now, but I've lived because the military across the United States and across the world. I could say, hey, <laughs> screw Florida and screw Alabama and screw all these other states, but that's not the way that we should think. We, it's we, the people, yes. we, the people of the United States, we are in this together, the poor, the rich, the, the those that quite frankly don't have the means or that do have the means doesn't matter what your education level is we got to come together and think about it not just yourself I, sir i used to work in city government and i always think of when we tried we looked at privatizing a specific service garbage pickup we found out not only was it going to be more expensive but we couldn't uh, uh rely on the same quality and so right. that that notion of privatization for everything I always think of that one little example from one small city in Wisconsin in the United States. It doesn't prove anything to me. Well, and the other thing in your in your opinion piece today, uh, Randy, in uh, the Wall Street Journal, is it's going to it's going to change. So currently, the the federal government supplies seventy five percent of the funding for FEMA, and the state is responsible for twenty five percent. Project twenty twenty five is going to flip that, yes. and the federal government then will only be in for twenty five percent. And these states, as you pointed out, Randy, so many of these states that get hit by hurricanes are poor southern states. Yes. Where are they going to come up with 75 percent well, of this funding? Well, they're not. They're not. And that's why, Jane, if I could bring this back around again as we're, as we're heading up here for the hour, is there were two songs that were played uh, by, by Greg and the guys here. One was 10 years after I want to save the world. I heard that in high school. I'm dating myself. But it says... I want to save the world, but I don't know how. And the second song is by Nickelback, What Are You Waiting For? And it's basically saying, hey, now is the time to act. And the idea of, I don't know, I want to save the world, but I don't know how. I, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can do it, is you can vote. Number one, vote, vote. Every registered voter out there needs to know they need to vote for Vice President Harris and Governor Waltz. That's number one. Number two, I urge every listener to call or email or use social media to reach out to 10 people and ask them, have you voted yet? Please go do so if you have not done so and ask them to get 10 other people. This is going to be about voter turnout. Yes. There are, there's almost no one who doesn't know who they're going to vote for. However, it's also true that some people are saying, why should I vote? They're, they're throwing up their hands. Instead of, as was said, instead they're throwing up their hands like, I don't know what to do, instead of rolling up their sleeves and saying, I am going to go vote. That is what you can do to save the world. And I mean it. This will have global ramifications. A second Trump term will affect the global order. We don't have nearly enough time to even touch on that. Retired Major General Randy Manor, thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you so very, very much for your service. And for getting out there and spreading the message. Hopefully we can have you back after November 5th and have a different kind of discussion. Jane, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure as always. Thank you so much. News is coming up next when we return. Dan Schaefer will be here from the Recombobulation Area. Stay with us. You're listening to Matt Nair on air on the Civic Media Radio Network.